Hello my friends, today we will edit a macro photo, we will edit this image from this to this and the purpose of this video is to just show you my workflow, what programs I use, how I sharpen my images and just how I edit my macro photography in general. So let's go to the computer and see how we'll edit this image. Here we are into Lightroom and I took this image with my Sony A1 and for the lens I used the new Laowa 90mm uh, 2.8 2x magnification. I used a flash for this, my shutter speed was 1 to 50 of a second and at f8. So as you can see this is the raw image, I have not done any edits to it. So let's see how I would edit this image. First I would go with the mask, I will select the subject and I just want to brighten a little bit my subject. As you can see Lightroom is pretty smart of really finding our subject. So I will increase the exposure into my subject, increase the contrast, maybe take down the highlights a little bit, open up the shadows, add a little bit of white and bring down the blacks a little bit. Great. I will even add a little bit of extra saturation, not too much. I will add some 22 texture. Uh, 19 clarity and maybe a little bit of sharpness around 40 and that is for my subject. Let's crop this image. I want to crop it in pretty tight something like that and I think that looks way better. Maybe even close something. There we go. We are on the rule of thirds. We're staying on this line and we will take that change. As you can see, I got lucky. Both of the, if I go at 100%, both of the flies have their eyes in focus. This very rarely happens. Usually one will be in focus. The other one would be blurry, but this time they're both in focus. So that is fantastic. What else would I do in Lightroom? In Lightroom, I would go to the color, uh, to the camera calibration, and I just want to increase the saturation on the blue, and that's going to make the green and the orange stand out a little bit. You see that? You see, if you go too much, it's just too much, but just a little bit, and that helps a lot. Also, I feel like the colors are a little bit too warm, so I'm going to make the white balance cooler because I like my greens to be a little bit cooler tone. And that way their bodies are not so yellow anymore. Maybe that's too much. Something like that looks good. I did like the way the eyes were a warm tone. So I'm going to make a mask and I'm just going to change the white balance just for the eyes. So I'll create a new mask and I'll use the brush this time. I'm just going to paint over their eyeballs. Make sure I do both of them. And I am just going to warm it up a little bit and add some magenta. Something like that, and I like it. Great, I think we're done with that mask, and I don't think I will do anything else in here. Maybe go to the luminance, make the oranges a little bit brighter, not too much. The reds maybe a little bit brighter. I want to take down the greens, not too much, but just a little bit. Maybe take the saturation down into the greens, and also change the hue of the greens a little bit more towards cyan just to cool them off a little bit. And I do like the contrast between the cool greens and the warm uh, bugs. Now look at it, I'm thinking maybe the bug is a little bit too blue tone. So I'll go back to my white balance and I'll add a little bit of that warm tone back into it. And that looks great. Now I will take this image into Photoshop, Shop, Command E to send it into Photoshop. And now that we are in Photoshop, the first thing I like to do is duplicate my layer. So Command J to duplicate the layer. And now I want to sharpen the, the heads of the bugs. To do so, first I will zoom at 100%. So I hold down Z and click this 100. And now with this top layer selected, I will go to filter, other and do a high pass filter. When I do a high pass filter, I do like to click on the eyes so I can see it. And then you move the radius to whatever it looks good to you. You don't want to go too much where you're getting this color showing out because then you'll get a lot of haloing in there. So for this image, I'll take, take it maybe around 2.2. That was good. And I will click OK. And now I will change the blending mode from normal to overlay. And let me just, this is already zoomed at 100%, but look at the difference before 
and after before and after we added so much more sharpness but i don't want to sharpen the noise and everything in the background so i'll click on the option where i click on this mask to make a negative mask black hides and white reveals and now b for the brush i will paint with the white brush onto their heads right now black color is selected if i click x it will toggle between the white and the black and with the b for the brush now i can just paint onto the insects and make them be sharp but let everything else kind of just you know go into blur great now i need to flatten my image i will right click on the layer and just go to flatten image and now we will duplicate the layer again command j i want to fit the image to screen so i can see it better so command uh, zero to fit to screen and this time i want to apply an action that will kind of just blur the background a little bit and i made a whole video about this one it's turner go see that video if you're curious about this action but i will play it and this will just blur the background even more and maybe darken it a little bit there we go but now my bugs are blurry again so into this mask with the this time a black color i clicked on the x to toggle to the black paint and now I'll make sure that I brighten up my bugs and just, you know, make them stand out more. I did kind of like the way the edges of these leaves had like some sort of interest to them. So I'll make sure those stay kind of sharp too. Now I need to flatten my image again. I can right click on the layer and flatten, but usually my, my normal workflow, I'll use the TKA panel and just flatten the image. It has a shortcut button over here. Great. One more thing I would like to do is to duplicate my layer again, Command J, and this time I will go to Filter, Topaz Lab, Topaz Denoise, because I do want to remove the noise in this image. It was, um, I think I only had like ISO 100, so it shouldn't really not have any noise, but I do like to remove the noise. Sometimes when you have underexposed Im images, you might get some grain, even if your ISO was very low. So there we are, I have uh, I will turn both of this setting to auto. So it shows the standard mode is the best for this image and remove noise at 15 and hand sharpness at 53. And this is the before and after, before and after. In my opinion, we don't need all this sharpening because we already apply some sharpening in Lightroom and Photoshop. So I will take down the sharpening to maybe around 19. And then I'll click apply to accept these changes. And now, of course, you guessed it, we'll flatten the image one more time. I find these two dots over here distracting, so I will use this uh, tool over here, the patch tool, and just make sure I get rid of those. I'm sure those are there for a reason, but I don't like them, so I will remove them. Command D to get rid of those marching ends. And this is our image. Let's examine it a little bit closer. Z to click on 100. This is at 100%. Everything is sharp. It's looking great. And I think it's a very nice image. Now all I have to do is go to File and Close and then save it. And this will send it back into my... Oops, I'm sorry. You're not supposed to see that. I need to get my uh, bar back in here so I can go to Lightroom. And if we go back to the original image and go on develop and reset it to what we started with, this is what we started with and this is our edited image. So this is the before and this is the after. I think it looks a lot better. Maybe I even want to crop it just a little bit more just to make it a little bit more impressive. So we'll go with something like that. And that is great. I hope this was helpful and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing and I will see you in my next video.